Okay, after you got your data from the API, we are now going to pass that API data into a model. And well, this is the model. Models can be really simplistic. They, it can give you a lot of uh, expanded data on a bar graph or a linear regression chart or whatever, or a basic dot plot. But basically a Monte Carlo, a Monte Carlo simula simulation is when we, uh, you're going to take like, let's say a thousand bucks and then invest it every month into the stock market. And your return could be five, 10% or something. You could say a statement like that, but you don't really know. So what a simulation does is run a simulation over and over again to check, like, what is the possibility of something happening? Maybe I have uh, negative returns. Right, maybe you have a negative forty percent return. I'll see along this chart, negative ten percent return. What is the likelihood I'll see a ten to twenty percent return if I invest in Apple for twelve months at a thousand dollars every month? You know, based on the historical data. And honestly, there's a lot of problems with this model, and I wouldn't use it for investing. Like, don't do that. But it's a really interesting machine learning tool an investor could use to like figure out like, hey, what is the probability of this working out based on historical prices? But using past data is never good for the stock market. But anyways, this is a great example of like, we'll take some real data, throw it through a model and get a, a response. So we're gonna do that right now. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is that if you see this icon here, this is a new folder icon. Uh, we select this folder and create a new folder Oh, actually, I don't need to create a folder. Uh, we just need to do test code here. Sorry, I forgot. We need to test our code first. So we're going to do test model.py. And we are going to then first uh, make sure that we call. Um, I'm going to do from API underscore call test import time series monthly. So in the last video, I created a function called time series monthly is that we get the data of the prices of a stock uh, in the last video. So we're going to take the data from that and then pass it to this uh, algorithm. And then I'm going to walk you guys through it. So first we're going to do def calculate underscore dollar cost averaging return. So we're going to have uh, four parameters with this stock data monthly monthly underscore investment months to invest and then uh, let's just take the commented code here and it will kind of explain what this all means so so this uh implementation you can find several iterations of this it's just like a cleaned up version for you guys to explain what's going on is that we could invest a thousand dollars into a stock or etf uh every month and randomly choose one day and uh purchase the maximum shares allowed with the available buying power so calculate the return of the dollar cost averaging. So if I invest a thousand dollars every month, we're going to then calculate what's our return on investment. And our parameters here are going to be stock data, monthly investment, and the months to invest. So I could invest over a 12 month period or a 32 month period, and our return on investment is going to be different every time. The farther you go out, I suspect the simulation will do poorly and won't really give you a good prediction. Um, so yeah, so we're going to set up our variables here. We're going to copy and paste code from the blog. So we don't uh, waste time all day. So just follow the blog post link along with the video. So, uh, here in this instance, uh, here's some data is that I, if I pass stock data, I can get the specific date out of, uh, my stock data here. And then I can use that data to call different situations. Uh, it's saying it's not defined, but it is. Sorry, it can just be like that sometimes. And then months equals to invest. So we have a start date and an end date. So the simulation needs a start date and an end date, and then there will be like a range within that date. Then in this part, we said we need to randomly select, randomly choose a day. So we need to do that section next. 
So we're going to have some variables here where we say, okay, in this date range, so we have a date range, let's say the beginning of this year to the end of the year, we choose a random day as within the month to invest. And then we're going to loop over each month to calculate the progress. So this section is really important is that in that range, the months to invest basically, um, this topic here, let's see. Oh, I see I had a, if you have a space here, this breaks uh, Python. So just be aware if you have full spaces. So yeah, your months to invest, it, we're going to loop over. So if we have 32 months, we're going to, every month we're going to randomly pick a day and then put a thousand bucks, right? And then uh, if you're not currently validation code here, we're going to go over. Uh, so if we're looping, right? Um, if the current stock day is empty, so if we pick a day that's just not there in the data, um, it's not going to like, you know, invest basically. So it's going to recalculate what it needs there. And then we need to calculate a return on investment. So basically um, every time we invest in a month, it's going to give us, you know, a, a return on that investment. And then it's going to put it into a total ROI and then we get that back as data. So now this is the function we've created to basically be like our uh, Monte Carlo simulation. We're going to go back and then we have to apply the model. So here I'm going to create a whole new function called df apply underscore model. And then we're going to put all our parameters in. So our number of iterations, dollar amounts, and then number of months, number of months. All right, and then we can do, uh, just say this is the simulation. All right, and then we just wanna make sure we uh, call everything here. Got, so I could iterate over like a thousand times and, and iterate over a hundred times on this loop. So data and then dollars. We need to then pass it as a float because we have cents. So I want to make sure the data typing is going to be correct when we pass it to the model and then the number of months. So there's no like uh, 0 0.5 months um, here. There's just going to be like a hard integer here. Okay, and then ticker simulation data. Data, okay. All right. And then, um, so like I said, um, so now if you can think about it like this, so this function right here, calculate a dollar cash average return. Just imagine that's one throw of the ball on the roulette wheel. That's one throw. That's all you're doing is that you're saying, okay, imagine in a simulation of one year, I'm going to invest a thousand dollars randomly on a day. And what's my return on investment? That's one throw. That means we have to iterate that throw a thousand times to make it a Monte Carlo simulation because you're kind of you're just going over the roulette wheel over and over again. So we're just going to then do 4K in range. So we're going to get the range on the number of iterations. And then there we go. Did I get that right? No, no, I spelled it wrong. Hold on. Durations, okay, and then we are going to calculate for the simulation. So we're going to do x equals calculate TCA return. We need to pass my parameters in um, dollars and then number of months. Cool. Okay, cool. And then we need a ticker stem data. So every time we run the simulation, we are going to append the data to a dictionary here. 
So we collect all the data every time we run, run the model. Um, you can print it out simulating. So like you could just do a print statement. Uh, let's see, we're iterating. Okay. And then we need to return our results. Ugh, can't spell for me. All right, ticker. Yeah. Okay. So like I said, this function above calculate DCA return is one throw of the roulette wheel. And then we're going to iterate over and over and over again. And then um, we're going to make the call. So let's uh, run this thing. So just to uh, make it simple. So we need to get the data. So earlier I got that data here from above time series. So we're going to look at Apple here. You can change it to IBM or you know, Alphabet if we want. Um, it's GTX maybe it would work here. We'll try that. And we just want to make sure that this is going to work. Ticker, I switched the ticker in the API key. That's why I need to fix this. Just fix that. Okay, and then we need our variables. So like I said, we're gonna call this function simulation data equals apply model. We need the data, the iterations number here. We're gonna need iterations. We're gonna need amount or DCA and then the number of months here. So let's see if we get the number of months. Let's see, um, make this monthly investment just so it matches. So we're not like, confused here. So monthly investment. So what this means is I'm going to invest a thousand dollars. I'm going to iterate the simulation a thousand times over a 12 month period. Um, just update the number of months here. All that S. Okay. So now we should get this data out of it. So I'm going to print the data out after it's done and then we'll do, then we'll model it. So Python test model. There it is. It's iterating. So that's going to take a minute. I'll just skip ahead here. And there's all our data. So this data is going to go into a graph, to give you an idea of like, what is the likelihood of your return on investment? Some of this data is saying like, oh, you're going to get a negative 20% return. So you're going to lose money, for example. Um, we're going to go ahead and then um, just going to import matplotlib plot as plt. Um, we're going to have to install that library if I didn't do it already. Plotlib. Yeah. Go down here. Let's install that library. Yeah. All right, then. All right, so we install the library. We're going to do, I do histogram chart, histogram chart, plt hist. All right, pass the simulation data there, right? And we're going to add a, and then we're going to do bins equal auto. So every column is what they kind of call a bin. So it's going to automatically sort those bins there. And then um, we're going to then, I think that's all we need for that. So now we need to write the plot title. So I'm just gonna paste that in and then update the code here to a number of months, and then make sure the iteration is correct. And then we need to label our X and Y's. So, you know, when you plot on matplotlib, let's do X label string 
and we're going to do number of months there plus um, month return percent and then we need to close that off all right great and then we can do our y label and number of iterations so the iterations on the left hand side tell you how far in the iterations something got and then plot xlm cell im just kind of make sure that's good and then we need to show it here okay so that should cover everything there and we are going to give this a shot and test it out i'm going to not I actually uh, let's see here. Uh, do I want to change? Okay, I think that should be good. All right, so we're going to call the test model. Oh, I didn't want to print out every single iteration here, so I wanted to comment this out. Actually, we'll we'll just let it run and. Um, I don't know if I want to print out the data too. The data is there. But here, so for this stock called GTX, which is like a transmissions motors company, need a little spacing there. Um, here it's saying that into the 60th, 80th iteration, you know, there's this likelihood, you know, you're going to lose money, uh, negative 40, negative 30%, negative 20%. And then finally a 10%. So now that we've built our kind of model, now we need to kind of put that into the app. So the next step would be to basically, you know, get that written out. So the next step here is going to put our roulette wheel into the app. And then, you know, from there, everyone can kind of play with it.